Let's talk user logins and users being saved as logged in whenever they come back to your app. We're actually gonna cover three things in this video and they are gonna be pretty quick. First, we're gonna cover this toggle switch and we're gonna look at setting it as a state variable, yes or no. Then uh, we will be applying the toggle selection, so the selection of the toggle. Uh, to the workflow that determines whether or not uh, this this function is is checked and then number three we're going to be doing a page redirect which is probably the thing that you might have been forgetting if you came to this video and was wondering how do i keep my users logged in so first and foremost let's take a look at this toggle uh, button this toggle button over here on the workflows if we take a look here basically when it's no we're saving it as a state yes when it's yes, we're saving it as a state no. Notice this element group login and the custom state is remember me. So over here on the button login is clicked. Boom, group login, remember me. So it's this stayed login option when the user is logged in. Now, if we look at the sign up one for the sign up the user, we do not have that option. So we can have it remember the email, but that is different. That's just like, it's gonna autofill the email when someone comes back and then, uh, the stay logged in is only available on the login thing, which I think is a fine user experience. If somebody, you know, if you did it like five times and are like, geez, just let me stay logged in already. Um, then, you know, one time is not too bad. So the stay logged in on the login button, how does that work? Well, basically if we take a look over at the bubble manual, which um, is your handy resource, whenever you have questions, let's be honest, uh, all the video explanations are uh, amazing as well. What it's going to do is it's going to keep that person logged in if it's checked for 365 days. So that kind of solves a lot of problems when it comes to logins. You know, if you don't want to go the extra route of adding a Google uh, account sign up, uh, but that is available on this channel. If you're interested, a lot of people do like that because it's one click and they're already, well, a couple clicks, but it's there's no typing of passwords is the point. Uh, but the stay logged in will last for a year. And then let's see, let's glance back to our outline we have done number one number two we've looked at the toggle switch we see it applied to the workflow so the only thing that's really missing and then we'll demo this is when someone has came come to the page and here is likely what is happening in your world if you came to this video and you're like hmm maybe you did actually uh, select this keep the user logged in but so they're showing up onto this page and they are already logged in, but what that's doing. So for example, a lot of people, this is a lot of people do something like app.myapp.com or something like that for your domain name, right? And then you have your marketing site on your domain. So you click log in, it takes you to this page and they're actually already logged in, but there's no redirect in place. So let's take a look at what that is when the page is loaded. Just go ahead and add a navigational step to go to whatever the kind of splash page or whatever it is that uh, the first page that people are taking to you upon login of the app. And yeah, go ahead and have that, you know, selected here, but only when the current user is logged in. Now I'll add to that this extra bonus that a good way to do this setup then, because if you have this stuff, these elements being displayed, meaning they're uh, visible on page load, and then you let that conditional run, it's going to be like a small user experience where they see the stuff on the page and then the direct to the other one. It's not the nicest user experience. So what I prefer to do is just add this uh, element is by default not visible, and then it is visible when the user is logged out. So here we can see, we'll just load this page. Hmm, that's interesting. But uh, so I am logged out. And let me go ahead and sign up. So first, let me just go. Let me go and sign up. See that? Okay, so now I've navigated to this page. And what we want to do, though, is we want to go back to that page here. But first and foremost, before we do that, let's just go and turn this workflow off. So we'll disable this workflow and then we'll see it when it's on as well. So we can see what's up. So here I am actually logged in. 
Yeah, so I am logged in, and because you know those elements are hidden, unless the user is logged out, uh, I can just prove what the thing I want to show is that this, when this workflow is live, somebody comes to your login page, they are logged in, boom, it drops them into the first page inside of the experience. Therefore, both uh, experientially and you know in the system backend, the user is kept logged in, and when they are logged in, they're just directed automatically to the first page inside of their app. Hope you enjoyed this and that it uh, helped you out to overcome any little issues you might have been had having in the world of getting your users logged in and off into the app so they can start taking care of whatever it is they came to take care of. If you like this video, check out other ones on the channel about login stuff. We have a Microsoft video, a Facebook login video, a, uh, let's see, Google, no, an Apple, Apple and a Google. We have four. They're awesome. And uh, a lot of people do expect the ability to log in through a social uh, login that they already have. So it makes it easier for them who likes passwords, but, you know, do as you will, build fast, move on, upgrade later. Uh, and that's it. Thanks for watching.